I want to talk today about isolated osteal branch disease, particularly osteal diagonal disease. Uh, it's a type of bifurcation disease, Medina 001, that is particularly disturbing because the main branch is not diseased and while you're maneuvering and potentially stenting the side branch, you'll end up having to balloon and potentially stent a main branch that is at baseline healthy. And the way I see it, there are four types of side branch disease. One is the LED diagonal, two, the SERP OM, three, the RCA PDA, and four, the left main, left circumflex or left main LED. Uh, the one that is most challenging and most disturbing to me is always the LED diagonal. And I will elaborate on the treatment strategy of each of those subtypes, but I will focus on the LED diagonal. Um, so ideally, when we're talking about main branch, uh, side branch uh, disease, if you want to stent it, you want the stent to, to land like this, perfectly cover the ostium, not miss the upper arm, which is usually the one hardest, harder to cover. And you don't want it to overhang too much. You don't want it to hang too much. For example, in this case, in order here, in order to cover the upper arm of the side branch, the stent had to hang too much in the main branch. Potentially, it will have to touch the wall of the main branch. And that may be the way to do it. But the ideal scenario is this one, where you do not touch at all that main branch that does not have any disease, neither balloon it nor stent it. You just wire it and position the stent perfectly like this. And in order to do that, this is what I would call the perfect T, not T and protrusion, a perfect T uh, with very little to no protrusion in the main vessel. In order to do that, you need to have a very good angle of side branch and ideally it really needs to be very close to 90 degrees. And the main branch needs to be wide enough to accommodate any little bit of overhang. So if you want to do one stent in the side branch only, like here, you want it to be a perfect T, not a tap with overhang in the main vessel, as this would require ballooning of the main vessel to prevent that stent from touching the opposite wall of the main vessel. Also, this tap would require a kissing balloon inflation to streamline and smoothen flow in a linear fashion into the side branch and another flow into the main branch. And in order to do all those maneuvers for the tap, you need to already have a stent in place in the main branch. That's why tap is part of a two stent placement strategy, not part of a one osteal side branch stent strategy. You need to already have a stent in place in order for you to do the tap safely. You only do tap after you've already placed a main branch stent. So that's why when we do the T, isolated T for isolated diagonal disease, really the angle has to be close to 90 degree with a wide main branch. I will now describe the subsets, uh, those four subsets and describe what strategy can be done to each. So that ideal scenario of a perfect T uh, can be done in osteal left circumflex and osteal LED simply because one, your angle is close to 90 degree, two, the main branch is large at this level. So you often can do a perfect T in those cases without having to balloon or touch the LED or the left main, just wire the LED left main and balloon and stand the left circumflex. You end up with a perfect T. Another case where a perfect T is feasible is usually that RCA osteal PDA uh, disease. So RCA not involved, you have osteal PDA disease. You often can do a perfect T without having to balloon or stent the main RCA. Sometimes in some osteal OM disease, if the angle is close to 90 degrees and the circumflex is large, main branch is large, you may also be able to do a perfect T. Okay, again, it has to be a perfect T, not a tap. 
So here I will move to the LED diagonal. And before that, I just want to comment on one thing. Some people describe the Zabo technique. I won't uh, elaborate on it here because I don't think it's useful. But for those who know it, Zabo technique is a technique that can be used in osteal uh, disease, including osteal branch disease. It makes, it makes sure that the stent is covering that very ostium fully. It's not missing the ostium, meaning that stent is not distal here and you're not missing the ostium. You're covering the upper and lower arm of that ostium. However, it does not prevent overhang. If anything, it may aggravate the overhang. So Zabo technique, in my opinion, is not very applicable for those cases. It doesn't prevent the bigger problem, which is overhang. Okay, so I will move to LAD diagonal. Uh, which is what I uh, what is the most concerning uh, disease. Uh, one, since you'll end up frequently having to touch the LAD and potentially balloon and stand the LAD, and since diagonal disease is not usually a deadly disease, the treatment of diagonal disease is done to relieve angina. So really, you should be very aggressive in using uh, conservative medical therapy, multiple anti-anginal. Try your best to avoid PCI of isolated diagonal disease. If PCI is absolutely needed for refractory angina, try balloon only result, such as regular balloon or a cutting balloon. And in Europe, you can use a drug-coated balloon. Even if you don't use, we don't have a drug-coated balloon. If you get a good uh, result with balloon angioplasty, even if there is a high risk stenosis rate, the restenosis rate is still probably less than 50% if you take the restenosis rate in the balloon angioplasty era. And that's uh, reasonable enough for a disease that is not deadly and when you're trying to simplify things and avoid touching a non-diseased LAD. If the balloon angioplasty result is not good and it has refractory angina, then Unfortunately, we have to do some other stenting strategies that I will describe. But before I describe that, I want to give you two disclaimers here. One, no large studies have addressed isolated side branch disease or isolated diagonal disease. So what I will describe is partly my personal experience and partly an extrapolation from uh, general bifurcation studies. Two, isolated uh, branch and isolated diagonal disease is not very common, partly because often the LAD is somewhat involved, even if it doesn't look too severe. So here is my point. Keep a low threshold to assess the LAD by FFR of IVUS if moderate disease is seen in that LAD. It is a frequently significant. And if it is significant, then we go to standard bifurcation algorithm and your focus becomes on the main branch, on that LAD. And you can choose to use stent of the LAD with provisional ballooning of the diagonal, or you may choose two stent strategy, depending on the extent of disease in that diagonal, how long it is and how complex it is. So again, Make sure you assess the LAD if you have any doubt, haziness, or moderate disease. And if the LAD is diseased, then your focus shifts primarily to the LAD. You work on the LAD and you treat the diagonal provisionally, whether with provisional balloon, provisional stent, or upfront to stent strategy if the diagonal disease is super tight and super long and complex. Now, if you absolutely have to stand that diagonal, there are two ways, in my opinion. The first way, which I completely discourage, is the mini crush or DK crush technique. And this technique, basically, you're putting a stent in the diagonal, overhanging in the LAD, then you're crushing it with another stent in the LAD. Again, you're putting a stent, full-blown stent in the LAD, proximally to distally, in an LED that is healthy at baseline. And you, you use that stent to crush the diagonal stent. Then after that, you will have to recross all that crush stent, stented area into the diagonal and perform kissing balloon inflation. Uh, 
So you will have to recross either three layers of stents at this level or two layers of stent at this level. Recross them and do a kissing balloon. That's the most difficult step of the mini crush. There is a good chance you don't recross properly and you, not you do not manage to perform final kissing balloon inflation, in which case you expose to LED and that this whole system to four times higher risk of stent thrombosis and late MI. You unnecessarily endanger the future of that LED. So I discourage that. I mean, you can do DK crush where you crush that a diagonal stent with a balloon, you rewire through two or one stent struts, balloon, then you crush again with a stent, a rewire, and kissing balloon. Uh, I mean, with a DK crush, you will still end up at the end having to cross through three or two stent struts. You might be making it easier, but you're double crossing that. You're crossing at the first level after the first uh, crush with a balloon, then you're crossing after the stent crush of the diagonal stent. So uh, both ways, you're endangering the LED and you might have difficulty recrossing, really not justified for that sort of disease. My preferred technique is the what I call the semi-culotte or half-culotte. Basically, you expand that diagonal stent all the way into the LED, and you double wire first, you expand that stent all the way in the LED, just a little bit in the LED, probably less than I'm showing in this picture. You deploy your stent, then you do pot and you can be done, that's it. So it's almost like this picture, you make it on purpose, extend and touch the LED, then you do pot of it and you can be done. This way you don't have an overhang you just have a perfectly layered stent. Optionally, you may recross that stent after pot into the distal LED and perform balloon dilatation of that stent struts to open the stent cells into the distal LED. It's controversial whether you, know, you do need to do that. I favor doing it, uh, particularly when we're talking about LED, particularly if there is a moderate plaque shift. I'm not willing to accept moderate plaque shift into the LED, which is the vessel that's far more important than the diagonal. I am willing to accept moderate plaque shift into the left circumflex, and I'll explain that in a little bit, if it is left circumflex OM, but I'm not willing to accept it for an LED. So if you have any plaque shift in an LED, you probably should do that. And you may consider doing it regardless. There is this theory that you have here uh, stent struts. And with time, you can build neurointimal hyperplasia over those stent struts, which can create a narrowing of flow into the LAD. And furthermore, it will make it harder to cross the LAD distally in the future. So for that reason, I favor rewiring and ballooning that area to reduce the chance of neointimal hyperplasia growing over those uh, closed stent struts that can further narrow the LED in the future and make it hard to access distally. This is a paper that suggests you do get neointimal coverage of those stent struts that are crossing a bifurcation. All right. So strongly consider doing recrossing and uh, ballooning in the case of an LED, particularly if there is any moderate plaque shift. I want to uh, comment here that if this same anatomy is left circumflex OM, it's different because in many cases, the OM is as important as the le left circumflex. So it's as important as the main vessel or maybe more important. So you feel more comfortable just stenting into that semi-culotte without touching that circ again. It's like you're doing provisional stenting in that case. And you can even think of the circumflex as a side branch and the OM as the main branch. And in that case, the disease is almost like 010, not 001, because the OM is, is almost like your main branch. So in that case, I'm more comfortable stenting across 
and only rewiring and ballooning if you have severe plaque shift, okay? If the circumflex is less important than the OM. But that's almost never the case with the LAD. That's why I favor more aggressive rewiring and potentially ballooning in the case of LAD, whether to prevent this phenomena or in case you have moderate plaque shift, okay? Now, when you do that, make sure your balloon is undersized and use low pressure just to reduce that plaque shift and distribute it axially uh, and to avoid creating dissection and long-term risk of restenosis of that LED. Now, let's say we did that. We did the semi culot but the LED has really severe plaque shift. So balloon is not going to do it here. Uh, so what's the next step? In this case, we have to convert from semi-culotte to either a full culotte, where you advance not just a balloon, you advance a full-blown stent in the LAD and you make it extend and cover the proximal LAD in a culotte fashion. Or what I would prefer is to do the provisional tap. So instead of full culotte, you do tap. So you position a stent in the distal LAD, but you don't make it touch the proximal LAD, the proximal main branch. You position a balloon into that diagonal and you prevent that stent from touching the LAD. You deploy it while the balloon is positioned, then you inflate both eventually and you have that T with the protrusion into the LAD. The reason why I prefer that to uh, culotte is once you convert to full culotte, well, then you'll have to recross into the diagonal and do your final kissing balloon. And I worry about potentially the ability to recross. Whether, whereas when you use the provisional tap, you don't have to recross. You use that same wire that's here. You position a balloon across it. You position and deploy your tap stent into the distal LED. Then you do your kissing balloon. You don't have to rewire that diagonal at any time with tap. The only thing you have to do is you rewire into the LAD, which is what you needed to do to balloon anyway. Note that the tap we are using here is what we call inverted tap, where the tap stent is placed into the distal main branch after doing the semi culotte into the side branch. This is different from the traditional uh, provisional or planned tap where we start with putting a stent into the main branch proximally to distally then we put the tap stent into the side branch. Technically, it's the same, it's just different steps. I'm going to provide you here with some case examples. This is a patient who has isolated osteal OM disease. It's a very large OM and uh, no significant disease on the main circumflex. The way I would do this is I would do, it's a perfect case for that semi culotte I will double wire, I will place a stent into that OM in a semi culotte fashion, sizing it to that OM, maybe 275 millimeter, 2.75 millimeter stent, then do a pot of that stent with a larger balloon, probably close to 3.5 millimeter balloon. And if there is no significant uh, mo uh, severe plaque shift, moderate or severe plaque shift into that circ, I can leave it alone. This circumflex is big and it's bigger than the OM. So I'm less willing to accept plaque shift into it. So if it has moderate plaque shift, I will keep a low threshold to rewire it and balloon open the stent, stent struts, a balloon with a low pressure undersized balloon. This is another case. Uh, now, this one, I will admit that we did not do the proper strategy, but we learned from it. This is a case of uh, isolated osteal diagonal disease, uh, some diffuse disease in, in the LED, but nothing significant. Uh, we tried aggressive anti-angina on this patient, but the patient kept having chest pain walking to the bathroom. So we really needed to do something on it. 
uh, as I described earlier, I really try to do here isolated balloon angioplasty, a regular balloon and a cutting balloon, but we had a significant dissection, as you may see here, and we did not get a good result. So we felt obliged to unfortunately stand into the LED. Now, the best strategy here, as I explained, should have been to do that semi culotte from the LAD into the diagonal, then a rewire and balloon the LAD with a small, low pressure, undersized balloon. Of course, the catch with a semi culotte in this case is if you get bad, severe plaque shift in the LAD and you don't manage to rewire it, and it's an LAD that you cannot rewire it. That's the only concern in general with a semi culotte. If you ask me, what's, I'd explain the risk with a crush. Well, what's the risk with a semi culotte? It is the better strategy overall, but the only risk is if by any chance you happen to get severe plaque shift in the LED, which is not likely, and you somehow don't manage to rewire it, which is not likely because it's easier to rewire through stent cells in a straight shot than to rewire across into a side branch, particularly when you have multiple layers of stents. So technically rewiring that stent into the ID is much easier than rewiring this one here, but there is a chance you don't succeed in rewiring the LED. And if you don't succeed, well, you're, not re you're missing rewiring the most important artery, the LED, as opposed to missing rewiring the diagonal here. So that's the only hazard of semiculot. But I think it's rare to have that pitfall, okay? But maybe in the back of our mind, that was a concern here because the LED is fairly small. So for that reason, we decided to do a crush. And I will admit that was not the right decision. This is how we did it. We stented the diagonal while overhanging it in the LED and we had a balloon ready to crush that. Uh, stand. So we did that and we pulled back the balloon and crushed it. We decided to stand the LED and try again to rewire and do it like a mini crush technique. We were able to rewire, but we could not advance a balloon. So this is an illustration of our rewiring. So we actually rewired fairly easily multiple times. We rewired using workhorse wire. In this case, it was a BMW, what we tried also Samurai RC and Xion Blue. So we rewired, but we could never pass a balloon through the rewiring. And that's an issue that you will encounter in DK crush and crush. The top uh, reflex when this happens is that your rewiring is going somewhere here. It's either going behind those stent struts or is going between two stent struts, because you remember you have at one point three stent layers. So you may be going between some of the stent layers or behind them fully. That's your immediate reflex whenever you cannot advance a balloon into uh, the diagonal after the crush. So we rewired multiple times thinking, you know, we will be able to advance a balloon if we achieve better wiring uh, through stent cell rather than behind the struts. So we tried multiple times, it didn't work. Then eventually we thought, well, at this point, if it's not working, we're going properly through stent cells, not behind stent struts or between stent struts, but just because there are so many layers, it may be hard for the balloon to squeeze through. So after you, you rewire multiple times using good workhorse wires that are unlikely or less likely to slip beneath uh, stent strut, then it's reasonable to try to get better support and smaller balloons. So we did that eventually. Uh, we used, we changed the whole system. We got seven French guide, seven French guide liner, and we tried one millimeter Sapphire Pro balloon, which is the lowest profile balloon. We also tried Mamba and Corsair type of catheters, and none of this unfortunately worked. So we ended up having to leave the result with, without the final kiss. I mean, the result looks good angiographically, but there is a reason we try to pursue aggressively the final kiss is that we think if we don't final kiss, 
those overlaying uh, struts of metal across the diagonal will increase the risk of stent thrombosis in that area. We place the patient on ticagrelor. He has done well clinically, but still I wasn't happy. And that's the reason why I think half culotte is the way to go in those cases, okay? This is another case I want to show you, uh, kind of similar, also osteal diagonal without much disease in the LAD. That was done by my colleague. I tried a DK crush strategy. After the balloon crush of the diagonal stent, he could not cross, and he could not cross after, after the final crush with a, with a stent in the LAD. So, or maybe the issue, the same issue, he was able to cross but could not advance a balloon. So eventually he had to accept the result without um, final kissing balloon inflation. So those two cases show the limitation of doing a crush in isolated diagonal when the LED is not involved. We're used to having success rewiring and doing final kiss after mini crush or after DK crush because we here apply that technique mostly to left main disease. And this is why this technique has shown most use in left main disease. It's easier to recross a left main bifurcation than to recross something more distal, simply because your guide is very close to the osseum of the cirque. So it's easy to control your wire and it's easy to control the location of the wire and aim it in the center of the hole, as opposed to more distal where you have less control over where your wire will go. I want to show you another case. Uh, this case is uh, an osteal OM disease, but it's not isolated. It still will provide you an illustration of the technique. So it's a severe osteal OM disease, and there is a probably significant uh, left circumflex disease as well, and it is a large left circumflex. So it's a 0 one, one disease. Uh, you can see it in this view as well. So 0111 disease. Note that the patient also had severe osteal LED disease and I fixed his LED as well. So let's describe what we did here with that circumflex OM bifurcation. So to go to the algorithm, this is a true bifurcation with involvement of the CERC and the OM. And it is a fairly complex true bifurcation because the side branch, the OM here is tight and it is long and it's complex. The angle is a little difficult. So ideally you want to do a two stent strategy. Alternatively, you can treat the main circ as your side branch, as I explained earlier, and consider it a true bifurcation, but, ra but a rather simple true bifurcation, meaning the circ itself, the main circ, the disease is not long and it's not very tight over 90%. So you may just treat this as your side branch, stent across and balloon into it. So either strategy is okay. I decided to do a two stent strategy, but I use an interesting two stent strategy and uh, I will show you, and it, sh it will show you how you adjust according to how each step goes. So as I was wiring that OM, I realized wiring is quite difficult of that OM. Here I had to use a whisper polymer wire to wire it. And uh, so imagine having to rewire that. Imagine stenting that OM with a crush and having to rewire it. So for that reason, I decided not to use a crush or DK crush in this case. And I decided not to use culotte either. I want to try to not rewire at all into that side branch, whether with a crush or culotte. So after wiring it with a, a polymer wire, I decided to stand in a, in a, in a semi-culotte fashion. Okay, so I wired, I stented into the OM in a semi-culotte fashion. Then I decided to do the tap, the provisional tap, or here in this case, it's a planned tap, but it's an inverted tap into the main branch, which is what I have described here. Tap, it's an inverted tap into the main branch. Inverted tap into the main circumflex, where you position your stent into the circumflex while having a balloon into the OM. 
You deploy your stent while your balloon is stationed, deflated. Then you pull back that, that top stent balloon and you inflate both this red balloon and the top balloon, you inflate them simultaneously. This way you ensure that at no time this stent is touching the opposite wall and you end up with a top stenting. That's what we did here and I got very good result across it, okay? Using that semi culotte into the side branch followed by a tap, a planned tap. You could have done it also in a provisional fashion. You could have stopped after this if the circumflex was okay with just balloon. But I prefer, since it's a true bifurcation that is complex in my opinion and it's a big circumflex, I prefer to do the planned tap here. Now, this is another case. Again, this is not isolated diagonal. This is diagonal with LAD disease. Uh, the diagonal is more severe than the LAD. Here, the diagonal is uh, probably 90% or the LAD is 75%. But nonetheless, when you have this, even if the diagonal is the most severe disease, once the LAD is involved, your focus in the, is in, on the LAD, the diagonal is treated either provisionally with a balloon, provisionally with a stent, or sometimes with a two-stent fashion, depending um, on the anatomy. So in this case, we have a true bifurcation that is complex, meaning the uh, LAD is involved, the, the diagonal is involved, it's tight, about 90%, and it is long, over 10 millimeters. For that reason, I chose to do a planned two-stent strategy. How would I, however, I would not default you if you choose to do provisional stenting. Even in uh, a relatively complex true bifurcation, it's perfectly fine, I think, to just aim at stenting the LAD and ballooning and getting good balloon result across the diagonal. Even in complex true bifurcation, the evidence is not overwhelming that you absolutely need to do two stents think doing a provisional stenting is appropriate, as I explained in a prior talk. And you take into account how difficult it will be, again, to rewire. It's probably better to treat provisionally here with a just balloon in the diagonal than to do, try to do crush and decay crush and not be able to rewire, end up with a high risk of thrombosis across that LAD. Okay. So anyway, I decided to do a two cent strategy. And here I decided to do an interesting strategy. And I will show you the options. So one is provisional approach where you do D1 angioplasty and LED stent. And only if unacceptable provisional result in the diagonal, particularly if residual disease over 75%, then you do TAP which I would prefer as a provisional strategy, as I explained before, I would prefer it to reverse crush and culotte. It is the preferred provisional strategy. In this case, it will be the direct tap, not the inverted tap that I used in, the, in this case, okay, where the tap is done in the main branch. In this case, I would do tap into the side branch if needed. Alternatively, you can do planned decay crush, planned culotte, or actually planned TAP. It's not much talked about, but TAP can be used as a planned strategy. Again, because TAP is the strategy where it's easiest to rewire, where you need to rewire the least, only one time through one layer of stent struts. And this is what I did here, planned TAP. So I wire the diagonal using a BMW workhorse wire, then I dilated it. Uh, then I stented the LAD while jailing the diagonal wire. I use here a three by 16 millimeter stent in the LAD. Then we pot the proximal LED with a short 3.5 by eight millimeter balloon. Then I rewired that diagonal using a sharp, sharply bent, again, workhorse BMW wire. And you can see here, we hook it, then flip it. And ideally, again, you want to try to cross uh, the distal struts. If you 
if you can, in tap and in provisional techniques, uh, proximal in crush, but distal in tap and in provisional techniques. Anyway, you hook the wire. Then once you hook, you try to flip it and let it find the best way with little resistance to go through. And this is what happened here. And after we rewired, we did kissing balloon. The result wasn't great, but we were planning to do tap anyway. So now I advanced the balloon in the LED. I positioned it distally a three millimeter balloon. Then I advanced a 2.75 millimeter tap stent into the diagonal. And I positioned it in a way that it fully covers that diagonal ostium. As you can see here, you want basically the dot to be covering that upper arm of, the, of that diagonal, which is the arm that is most difficult to cover, okay? So you want it to be covering that upper arm. You want the dot to be barely in the LED. In other terms, you want the dot to be barely touching the LED catheter balloon. We deployed our stent while that LED balloon is stationed and deflated. Then the next step is to pull that diagonal stent balloon, pull it and do higher pressure inflation to further expand that ostium. Remember the ostium of a side branch is always the most difficult portion of a bifurcation to expand and it's the location of highest restenosis. So we pulled it, inflated at higher pressure. Then we pulled the stationed LED balloon and inflated both in a kissing fashion to ensure also that that tap stent never touches the opposite wall of the LED. So this is how we do it. Tap stent while a balloon is stationed. Then we pull back that tap stent balloon, inflate higher pressure. Then we do the kissing balloon inflation as in final kiss. One additional comment, we were able to fit in a six French Icari radial guide. We were able to fit a 2.5 millimeter stent and three millimeter balloon in the LED. Simultaneous stent balloon through a six French guide. Keep that in mind. You can do that as long as your devices, the balloon and the stent are both three millimeter or less. You can fit a stent balloon simultaneously in a six French guide. Another comment is that when you're doing tap as part of two stent placement, you don't need to have an angle that is close to 90 degree. Ideally, it has to be 60 to 90 degree, but you can do it for a little less, as is the case here. You can do it for 45 to 60 degree. As long as you have good stent boost x-ray system and you perform proper positioning. 